There are a variety of reasons we have not yet developed a psychology of evil. But perhaps the most important reason is the fear of the consequences. We have good reason to be afraid. There are real dangers inherent in the development of a psychology of evil. Anyone who seeks to participate in the endeavor of subjecting the phenomenon of evil to the scrutiny of science should begin by deeply considering that this endeavor in itself has potential for causing evil. Evil is a moral judgment. I am proposing that it may also be a scientific judgment. But making the judgment scientifically will not remove it from the moral sphere. The word is pejorative. Whether we call a man evil on the basis of pure opinion or on the basis of a standardized psychological test, we are passing a moral judgment. Shouldn't we refrain from doing either? Science is dangerous enough. Moral judgment is danger enough. How dare we mix the two in the light of Jesus' admonition, Judge not that ye be not judged. If we examine the matter more closely, however, we will see that it is both impossible and itself evil to totally refrain from making moral judgments. An attitude of I'm okay, you're okay may have a certain place in facilitating our social relationships, but only a place. Let us look at everyday life. What kind of father would I be if I discovered my son cheating, lying, or stealing, and failed to criticize him? What should I tell a friend who is planning suicide, or a patient who is selling heroin? You're okay? There is such a thing as an excess of sympathy, an excess of tolerance, an excess of permissiveness. The fact of the matter is that we cannot lead decent lives without making judgments in general and moral judgments in particular. We must also remember the purpose for which we judge. If it is to heal, fine. If it is to enhance our own self-esteem, our pride, then the purpose is wrong. There but for the grace of God go I, is a reflection that should accompany every judgment of another's evil.